Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the 9th lecture of this course. This 9th lecture is on bio nano machines. So, in this lecture, we will learn about DNA based nano machine and the protein based nano machine. I will also demonstrate a simple experiment to study the motility of bacteria and we will also learn about the nano machine communication. So, first we will see what is nano machine. It nano machines are nano sized gadgets which doing mechanical work. The examples are like nano gears and nano wheels. The question is can we make nano motors and if you want to make nano motors what are the approaches available. If you see here there are three approaches physics based chemistry and biology based. In physics based approach we can use carbon nanotubes and we can make nano machines or nano motors and in the chemistry based approach we can use the supramolecular chemistry and we can make a small nano size machine also nano size switches. And in the biology based approach, we can use the DNA and protein for making various nano size machine or rotor. Okay. So, how to construct this nano machine? The first step for constructing nano machine is modeling and design. So, which comes under nano architronics and uh, these are the fields contributing to this modeling and design. And for synthesis of nano materials, mainly the chemistry, biochemistry, these fields contributes in the synthesis of nano materials. And the next step is fabrication. So, for fabrication of nano devices, we need the contribution from this cell biology and other fields. And finally, we have to integrate and make the complete nano machine. Okay. So, what would be the application of this nano machine? Let us see an example. So, we can make a drug delivery nano boat that is nano robots. So, which can precisely reach the tumor location and it can release the anti cancer drug. So, here you can see here it is specifically binding to the uh, uh, cancer cells and also it is releasing the drug and we can make such kind of small size nano machines not only for drug delivery application and also for various other applications. So, we can take the idea from the cell okay, because the cell is the most sophisticated existing nano machine and it has a efficient energy consumption and it has also multi task computing and multi sensing capacity. So, when the cell we can easily take the idea and we can mimic such kind of nano scale machines or nano scale robots. So, you can see this slide it is a complex uh, uh, metabolism. So, this kind of metabolism is going on in your cell every milliseconds or nanoseconds and without any disturbance or without any uh, trafficking inside the cell. So, how is it possible and when we understand this kind of complex things and we can make a very uh, small size nano scale machine which can do the job very precisely and which will have wide applications. So, that is why we are taking the idea from the nature. So, we can make the biologically inspired nano machines. So, how to make the nano machine what are the approaches? So, there are again two approaches bottom up and top down approach. So, man made nano machines are top down. So, we started with robots and we are trying to make nano robots and but nature it started with bottom up approach. So, it assembles DNA and protein and makes the nano scale machines. And, and especially in case of nano machine, uh, the DNA and protein play a major role because the manipulation of DNA or hybridization will allow us to obtain user defined biological nano machine. That means, like we can easily manipulate or we can easily modify the DNA and we can make uh, such kind of small nano machines and also we can make the user defined biological nano machine. So, that is the advantage of DNA and protein based nano machine. So, in the previous lecture I already told you that uh, uh, A always form bond with T and uh, G always form bond with C that is cytosine okay. and also I already explained why the DNA is helical in nature, what is the reason for the helical structure of DNA. So, let us see the various forms of DNA. So, here we have uh, three forms of DNA that is A DNA, B DNA and Z DNA. So, the main difference if you see that a DNA have 11 base pairs per turn of helix and uh, B DNA have 10 base pairs per helix and Z DNA have 12 base pairs per helix. So, these are the various forms of DNA A DNA, B DNA and Z DNA. So, using this how to make nano machines and nano motors we will see in the following slides. So, before we see how to make nano machines let us uh, get idea about some of the terminologies. So, here you can see here this is a double helical region and this B is a sticky ends that means overhangs and uh, C is your bulgy loop 
and D is a hairpin loop. If we have this kind of DNA sequence, that is called as hairpin loop, and this E is a junction, and this F is a crossover. And using this DNA, we can stretch the DNA, we can condense the DNA, and also we can play with the DNA by using external fields. So before we learn what is uh, DNA based nano machine, so let us learn uh, what is protein synthesis. So we will get the RNA from the DNA by the process transcription and from RNA you will get the protein by translation process. So we can take the example of transcription and translation, we can make such kind of small nano machines. So let us see translation. So you can see here this is your mRNA and this is your tRNA and this orange color is your rRNA. So the tRNA is coming and binding to mRNA and uh, another tRNA is coming, if it is not matching it will be removed. So this tRNA is matching with the sequence, so it is forming a peptide bond. So similarly one by one amino acids will come and join and form the protein. So you can see here how precisely it is moving. So it is also a kind of nano machine and at the end of the reaction you can see here this mRNA is getting degraded. So this poly A tail is very very important, if the length of poly A tail is more that means your mRNA half life will be more okay. So assume this is as a kind of nano machine and we can take the idea from this and we can make such kind of nano machine. So let us see the another example how to make a DNA based rotor or motor okay. So here we can use the DNA and we can use that RNA polymerase enzyme. So what happens is like when it synthesis RNA the DNA will start rotating in this direction. So that we can easily measure by tagging the DNA with this magnetic bead and the top of the magnetic bead we can also add the fluorescence beads and this magnetic bead will be held by external magnetic field. So when we add this RNA polymerase enzyme so this will uh, make the RNA, when it makes the RNA the DNA will rotate in this direction. So this rotatory motion can be easily monitored using the microscope. So the next example is DNA based nano machines and in this we can see like uh, various machines are available like B is a transition, molecular tweezer and also PX and JX2. So these are the various types of DNA machines available, so we will see one by one. The first one is B is a rotor. So this machine is based on transition between B DNA and Z DNA by changing the ionic strength of the medium okay. So this motion can be easily monitored by FRET. So what is FRET? It is a mechanism describing the energy transfer between two light sensitive molecules. So here we can simply changing the ionic condition of the medium, so we can convert the B DNA into Z DNA. So this is your fluorescent molecule and this is your quencher, so when in this when it is in the B DNA form it will not show any fluorescence, when you change the ionic condition, ionic medium, so it will become a Z DNA, so where your fluorescence molecule as well as quencher will be separated and it will give the fluorescence. So here you can see here, when it is in the B DNA form both the fluorescence and quencher will be together, so when you change the ionic condition, so this B DNA will be become Z DNA and your fluorescence and quencher will be separated. So when it gives, then it gives fluorescence okay. So this is called as B is that transition. So by simply uh, changing the ionic condition from B DNA we can make the Z DNA, in the B DNA the fluorescence and conscious are together, so it will not show any fluorescence signal. So when it uh, becomes Z DNA, when it becomes Z DNA what happens is that the fluorescence and conscious will be released and it will give the fluorescence signal. So the next example is rotatory DNA nano machine. So here this device works by producing two different confirmation, parallel confirmation and zigzag confirmation by using a two pairs of strands that is called as set strands okay. So that will binds to the this DNA single standard and it will make this kind of parallel or zigzag confirmation. So here you can see the example, so this double standard DNA it is holding this single standard and when we add this kind of set strands 
and it will form this kind of parallel conformation and zigzag conformation depends on the size of your set strands. If the sense set strands matching with this size of your uh, single stranded DNA, it will produce parallel conformation. If it is slightly bigger than the your uh, single stranded DNA, it will form zigzag conformation. So, here your DNA is acting like your fuel, based on the DNA it will have a rotatory motion. Next example is walking triangle, we can have this kind of DNA sequence and when you add a short fragment of DNA, single standard DNA, the red color one, uh, it is binding to this single standard DNA in between these two triangles and there are also uh, some unbound the DNA. So, that DNA will form like a loop like structure. So, in this case, both the triangles will be on the top and when we add the red color strand DNA which is matching with the single standard strand that is the blue color DNA. So, when it forms a hybridization what happens is this triangle will rotate it will have 180 degree rotation and it will move to the bottom. So, this is also another example for DNA based nano mechanical device. So, the another example is DNA tweezers ok. So, this is your DNA tweezer here you can have fluoropore that is your tetrachlorofluorescence in short it is TET and another one is quencher that is Tamra uh, this is uh, called as tetramethyl rhodamine in short it is called as Tamra. So, using this we can make the DNA tweezer we can open the tweezer and we can close the tweezer. So, what we can do is we can add a single standard DNA. So, this blue color will bind here and this green color will bind here and it form this kind of structure. When it form this kind of structure this fluorescence and quencher are close together. So, when it is close together the fluorescence signal will be off and when we add another sequence which is highly specific for this the blue color and green color strand. So, it will combine and this strand will be removed. So, when it removed this will be in a open state. So, here you will get the fluorescence because the fluorescence and quenches are separated. So, it will give a fluorescence signal. So, in this picture you can see here the fluorescence intensity is more when it is open state and the fluorescence intensity is down when it is in the closed state. So, same DNA user in animation you can see here when the stand binds it became closed state and the, when the stands get removed again it became the open state. So, let us see the another example that is a protein based nano machine. So, that is dynein F1 ATPase and bacteria flagella ok. So, here this dynein is a molecular motor that walk along the microtubule in a cell and ATPase synthesis ATP by using influx of protons to rotate and bacterium it use the flagella to move from one location to another location towards the chemical that is food. So, first we will see bacterial chemotaxis. So, this bacteria move from one location to other location using the flagella that means it move towards the food ok and uh, it get the signal from the food and it move towards that food that is called as chemotaxis. It get the chemi chemical signal and the bacteria move towards the food that is called as chemotaxis. So, here the bacteria move using flagellar motors and this protein network directs movement based on the external conditions. If you have food that is attractant or we have some other material that will repellent ok and this will simulate chemotaxis network. It will simulate more than 7 proteins then only this flagella will be in action to move towards the food. So, here the bacteria move towards chemical attractants. So, the process is uh, the attractants bind to the chemoreceptors and the chemoreceptors transmit information to a central processing system and the central processing system integrates many inputs and sends a signal to control the flagellar motors. So, the bacterial motility will be look like very simple, but you can see that how much uh, reactions are going on to make the bacteria to move from one location to other location. So, what we can take from this bacteria we can take the uh, sensitivity. So, if we have any food materials it is sensing and moving towards that. So, we can take the idea of sensitivity and we can develop such kind of nano machines and nano robots which can sense the cancer cell in your body and it can reach the cancer location and it can deliver the anti cancer drug. Here you can see here. So, if we have sugar solution all the bacteria is moving towards the sugar solution. So, and bacteria swim by rotating the flagella and motor located at junction of the flagellum and this motor can rotate clockwise as well as counterclockwise. So, this bacteria swims smoothly for once again and it change the direction by 
an average of 60 degree. So, movement is with respect to the attractants. If you have increasing concentration, it will be less tumbling and if you have decreasing concentration, it will have more tumbling. You can see here the bacteria flagella, it is like a kind of nano machine or nano motor. So, now I will demonstrate a simple experiment to study the motility of bacteria. By using hanging drop method, we can study the motility of bacteria. For this, we need a concave glass slide. So, in this glass slide, will be having concavity, okay. And we also need a cover slip. So, on the four sides, we will be adding a Vaseline, okay. So, is keep a simple uh, dot of Vaseline on the four edges. Then, in the middle of the cover slip, you add 5 to 10 microliter of bacteria. So, here we are going to add GFP. E. coli. So, GFP is green fluorescent protein expressing E. coli. So, by using this bacteria, we can easily monitor the motility of bacteria. So, once we add this bacteria to this cover slip, then gently keep this glass light on the top of this. and invert the slide. So, when you invert the slide, so your cover slip will be on the top of this concave slide and your uh, bacterial solution will be hanging. That is why it is called as hanging drop method. And under the microscope, you can study the motility of bacteria. So, let me explain the uh, hanging drop method to study the motility of bacteria. So, for this we need a concave slide and cover slip and also freshly grown bacteria. But in this case, I am not going to use the bacteria, I am going to use the simple water, okay. So, this is your uh, concave slide, okay and uh, this is a cover slip. So, on the four edges of cover slip, I am going to put the Vaseline. Just put one dot on all the four corners. So, all the four edges, I have added the Vaseline. Okay, so I hope it is visible, and in the middle of the cover slip, I will be adding the sample. Okay, so we have to use the bacteria which is in the log phase so that you can see the bacterial motility nicely. But in this case, I am adding water just to demonstrate you. Yes, for bacterial sample, you have to use the laminar hood and you have to prepare the sample aseptically. So, then I will take this uh, concave glass slide and uh, put it on the top of this cover slip. Then gently I touch this cover slip. So, you can see here. So, the cover slip is in the middle of the concave glass slide and your sample is hanging in the middle of the cover slip. Slide I will keep it under this microscope and you can focus the motility of bacteria. In this slide you can see here, we have recorded the GOP E. coli bacteria motility. So, you can from this slide you can understand the bacterial motility. So, let us see the another example ATP synthase. Okay. So, here the proton gradient drives F1 rotation accompanied by ATP synthesis from ADP. So, if you high ATP concentration that drives rotation in opposite direction with ATP hydrolysis which pumps protons. So, here you can see here during ATP synthesis it will rotate in the clockwise rotation and during ATP hydrolysis it will rotate in the counter clockwise rotation. So, it is a kind of a reversible motor and here the uh, F1 unit was attached with the dial loaded actin and attached to F0 and you can easily see the movement of gold bead by laser optical imaging. This is a gold bead, you can see here rotatory motion. And here the motor takes 
three 120 degree steps to complete one rotation. That means it takes three 120 degree steps to complete one rotation and also hydrolyzing one ATP molecule per step, okay. So now let us see uh, nano machine communication. So why this nano machine communication is important? So the nano machines such as chemical sensors, nano walls and nano switches, this cannot execute the complete task by themselves. So the exchange of information and commands between network nano machines will allow them to work in a cooperative and synchronous manner to perform more complex tasks such as in the body, drug delivery as well as and disease treatment applications, okay. So the nano machine communication is very, very important if you want to make the uh, successful nano device or nano motor for drug delivery applications. So let us see in case of biological nano machines, we can make this kind of logic gates. Suppose if both substrate and effector is present, then only it will make the product. If there is no effector or no substrate, the substrate remains unchanged. So we can make such kind of uh, logical gate. For example, if your uh, cancer cell is expressing two kind of receptors or two kind of markers, so then only this nanoparticle will bind, the nano machine will bind and it will release the drug, okay. So it won't release the drug to any healthy cells. So we can target it for various drug delivery applications. So in this molecular communication, here the sender and receiver, both are biological nano machine and the communication carrier, the molecule that is also in the range of nanoscale, proteins, ions and DNA, these are in the range of nanoscale and the communication distance, it will be become nano or micro scale and the receiver which receives the signal that is also in the range of nano scale. You can see here the sender is a nano machine and also the receiver is also nano machine and the information which is going from sender to receiver that is also nano scale that is protein or ions or DNA. So here the molecular communication is uh, divided into uh, two types that is a molecular motor that is a wired and uh, another one is calcium ion based that is wireless. You can simply uh, assume that uh, this molecular motor is similar to your uh, uh, telephone connection, landline connection and this calcium ion based wireless is your similar to your cellular phone, okay. So let us see the communication using uh, molecular motors. So first we will see what is a molecular motor. So it is a protein or protein complex that transforms chemical energy into mechanical work at a molecular scale and it has the ability to move the molecules. Here this is your microtubules and this is a molecular motor okay and it is the information. So this molecular motor is carrying the information from one location to other location through the microtubules. So it is mainly found in the eukaryotic cells okay. So it can carry the message and it can walk on the microtubule. So the molecular motors travel move along the molecular rails called microtubules and the movement created by molecular motors can be used to transport information molecules. So here you can see here this nano machines communicate using these molecular motors and these molecules are transported from encoder to decoder using this network of rail, okay. It is this molecular motor will walk on this network of rail and it reach from encoder to decoder and it will carry the information. So here how the communication happen in this molecular motors? Because it select the right molecules that represent the right information and it will carry the information and uh, through the micro tubules it will move and it reach the receptor okay and there your molecule will be detached and it will release the molecules okay. So once the receiver receive that information it will perform the work according to the information. So the next example is communication using calcium signaling okay. So here two different deployment scenarios are available. The first one is direct access and another one is indirect access. So here the exchange of information among cells located next to each other and in indirect access cells it can be separated without any physical contact and the information can reach the receiver. So let us see the direct access that is your gap junctions. So all the cells are connected and there is a nano scale protein channels between the two adjacent cells. So it will allow the small molecules to be shared among the cells and it will make the coordinated action of the cells, okay. So in direct access, the calcium signal travel through the gates that is your gap junction. From here, the information, it will go to the decoder receiver through the gap junction of the cells, okay. This is the direct access example. Next one is indirect access. 
Here the nano machine release the information molecules to the medium. So, the calcium molecules can go to the receiver which is little far away okay. and the receiver will receive the information and it will perform the task according to the information. So, here the information is encoded in calcium and it will involve the signaling initiation and also it, it propagates the calcium waves and the receiver receives the calcium concentration. So, according to the calcium concentration the receiver perform the task. So, what is the main application of this? We can have the pinpoint drug delivery, we can deliver the drug to the targeted cancer cells very specifically. So, as I told you earlier if both substrate and effector is there then only it will form the product. But still lot of challenges needs to be addressed because we want the system to be autonomous, we do not want any human control and we want the system to be closed that means no energy supply from outside and we also want the recycling of the carrier in molecules and again we want slow and sustained delivery of drug molecules. So, as a summary of this lecture we have learnt what is DNA based nanomachine and protein based nanomachine and we have also learnt nanoscale communication and this field need a lot of research to explore the potential application of nanomachines in various fields ok. So, I will end my lecture here, I thank you all for listening to this lecture, I will see you in another interesting lecture.